In this video, we're going to take a look at the brush settings. And again, those are in this little folder icon. If you come over here and navigate there, you'll see this little toggle brush panel. And that basically open up your, opens up your brush panel. You can always get there as well, going to the view, or sorry, window down to brush as well from here. Um, but this setting, we're not going to have time to look at each of these individual settings, but it will at least give you an introduction on some of the changes you can make to brushes and brush tips. Now, the presets is the same. This preset panel right here is the same as the preset panel you get by navigating over here. Only there's quite a few more options how we can customize our brushes. So we'll start off here and just look at a couple basic customizations. So I'm going to go up here and grab a preset that's just the circle hard brush here. Um, and I'll just paint a simple stroke here so you can see what that looks like. Again, I'm working with a Wacom tablet, so that means, you know, if I push hard, I get big. If I push small, I get a small stroke because that can be affected by my sensitivity settings up here. Um, so just sort of be aware. Um, I'm going to crank these both back up to 100%. And uh, let's take a look at a few options we have. Now, the first option we can do is we can affect the roundness um, and angle of our circle here. So if I grab these points, I can crank this brush and adjust the angle, or I can grab these two points and pull them inwards to affect the shape of that roundness. And if you pull them all the way in, you sort of almost have like a calligraphy brush um, because I've essentially, you know, I've, I've mashed those in so small that I have this sort of oblique shape there. Um, so you can mess around with this. I can change the angle there to flatten that out. And this brush preview down here will show you exactly what that looks like. And if I crank up the spacing, we can really see now what that's looking like. Increase my brush size here a little bit so you can see that easier. So you can create all sorts of interesting effects just by playing around with the, the single brush here. Now there's a term used throughout all of these settings here that's called jitter, J-I-T-T-E-R. So if you click this very first one, that sort of gives you all the brush tip shapes. And as we select down through these different categories, we get the different settings for each of these brushes. Now, something that's a little confusing for people at first, if you click on the name, it will show you the settings. If you click on the checkbox, that activates or deactivates those particular settings. So you can mess around with the settings of all these different brush settings, but you can also just simply turn them on and off at any point that you want. So let's come down here to the shape dynamics, and we'll experiment a little bit with what we call jitter. Now, jitter in Photoshop basically means random variation. So you can see the first option here I have is called a size jitter. Now to demonstrate this, I'm actually going to turn off my pressure sensitivity because I don't want my pin um, pressure to affect the shape. I want the uh, jitter to affect the shape, or sorry, size. So I'm going to take the size and go way up. And you can see down here in the preview, basically Photoshop is randomizing the size of each one of my brush dollops of paint. So now when I come over here and just paint around, I'm getting all sorts of random sizes, small to large because I have that size jitter turned way up. And I can mess around with the minimum. If I say I, I only want my brush jitter to be within this range, I can set my minimum diameter for that as well. I can also turn on the angle jitter. You can see what's happening right down here. Um, now I sort of get random angles as I'm painting along here, which sort of gives an interesting effect right here. Looks like that pickup sticks game. And the same thing now with the roundness. So if I mess around with the roundness value, Essentially, that's going to randomize this 4% value right here. That roundness will be randomized as well. So I'll come back in here. I've got that roundness jitter turned all the way up. And now each one of these circles will be a slightly different oval variation. They all have different rotations and size. So the jitter is sort of that randomness of your brush. Now it's getting kind of messy here, so I'm going to go ahead and fill this back with white by hitting command delete there to fill with my background color. And let's go ahead and move into the scattering. Now I can scatter my brush on multiple axes. So if I just click that checkbox. In other words, when I paint a straight line, it's no longer painting straight across. It's randomizing the X and the Y axis. And so it's sort of uh, painting all over the place at once, if you will. You can sort of see the randomization happening there. And you can paint on one axis or both axes if you want by just activating that, either the X or the Y. 
So that's the scattering jitter. All right, now in order to demonstrate texture here, I've sort of erased everything. I'm gonna go back and just reset everything. I'm gonna go back to this preset and turn off those dynamic settings and come back to texture. Now, if you just have this on the default settings, it's actually probably, you'll probably see that it doesn't look like you're getting a texture in your brush. And that's because probably you have the mode set to something different. Um, so you wanna come in here to the mode and these are basically the blend modes that the brush uses. So it's going to blend your foreground color over here, which is, you know, in my case, the sort of maroon, with uh, with whatever texture you choose inside of the texture presets. And you can build your own textures as well. Um, so I'm just going to change this just for a simple sample. Maybe we'll do overlay. And so it's going to overlay this color with this texture. And now you can see, just kidding, let's go ahead and set this to uh, multiply. That'll probably show us the texture there. There we go. And you can see now it's multiplying the color and the texture I have inside of here. And you can paint with those textures using uh, that texture feature. All right, we'll just look at one or two more of these. And you can sort of just play around with the rest of these on your own. Um, but we'll just take a quick look at color dynamics. Now, color dynamics works with your foreground and your background color. So I'm going to change my foreground color. I'm going to make these pretty obvious changes so you can see that happening here. So I've got one green and one maroon here. And I'll make sure I have my jitter turned up and my foreground background jitter turned up. And now when I paint here, you can see that what Photoshop does is it takes your foreground color and your background color and it sort of randomizes or jitters between those two colors. And so you can get all these variations between those two colors with your jitter and depending on your settings here, you'll get more or less uh, random randomization there. So that's uh, sort of how that works. Um, now, all of these settings are, they can get quite a bit complicated, and you can create some really um, interesting brushes. So in the next video, we're going to look at a few of the presets again that are back inside of Photoshop that have some of these built into them.